tutorial we're going to go over the Android Studio shortcuts shown on this page and then we're going to go over some of the differences between the older versions of Android Studio and the just about to be released version 2.2. Starting at the welcome screen for version 2.2 I'm going to start a new Android Studio project. Once Android Studio has finished initializing the new project, we can start adding code. Let's look first at this auto import feature. I've just created a private uh, member variable called foo and I've used the array list designation for the data type and as you can see the array list is lighting up in red because this is not a class that's automatically included. You can see in the blue bubble if I click on array list that Android Studio is suggesting where it might import it from and if you want to choose this automatic import which you will want to do about 90 percent of the time you just hold down the alternate key and hit enter and you can see that it will automatically import the class for you. One of Android Studio's strongest features is its autofill capability. Let's have a quick look at that. As you start to type, you'll see that it will automatically bring up for you a list of choices. If you want the very first choice on the list, you can just hit enter and it'll select it automatically. Alternatively, if you have not yet reached the one you want, you can keep typing and you see that the list changes dynamically until the one that you want eventually rises to the top. Once again, you can hit enter and it'll select it for you. Another alternative is you can use your mouse to click on the one you want. Often you'll be writing your code and you'll be missing a semicolon or some other small element inside your code. Here is where the autofix comes in handy. I've added this line of code, but I haven't quite finished by adding the semicolon. I can fix this by holding down the shift, the control, and hitting enter, and Android Studio will make its best guess as to how to complete the line. I found that it does a remarkably good job at this. Sometimes when you're calling a method, especially one that you have not written yourself, you may be confused about what parameters that method takes, or in some cases, if there are several signatures for that method, which one you should use. Here, the control P option comes in quite handy. I've got this line of code, foo.remove, and Android Studio is complaining that I don't have the right parameter list. If I click inside here and hit Control P, you see that Android Studio is showing us that we can either put an integer or an object in between the parentheses. Sometimes when you're coding, you need to change the code so that there's no visible change. However, you want to make it either more efficient or simply improve the naming. Let's say, for example, we wanted to change the name of a variable or a method. We need to do this in a smart way. Let's say I created a method called method1 and I was calling this method somewhere else in the code and I decided for whatever reason that I wanted to change the name of this method. If I click on the method name and come up here to where it says refactor and then say rename, I can now change the name to something else. Here are some suggestions from Android Studio, but typically you will want to pick some other name. So let's say I wanted to change the name to Procedure 1. Notice that as it's being changed here, it's also being changed everywhere else where this name is being used. This is the equivalent of doing a smart find and replace on a word editor. Finally, let's have a look at some of Android Studio's powerful code generation capabilities. I've declared this variable of type dog, but the class dog does not exist. If I click on the dog class, I'm going to get this little brown light bulb, and one of the choices is to go ahead and create the class. You see that it's created the class for me, and now I can also use some additional code generation capabilities to create the constructor for this class. So to do that, I'm just going to go up to code generate constructor 
and you can see that it creates a simple constructor for me. If I had a more complicated use of this dog class, for example like this, you see that it's complaining now that the constructors do not exist. I can create a new constructor and you see that it creates the new constructor for me. Likewise, if I have member variables in this class, I can automatically create getter and setter methods by going to code, generate, and clicking on getter and setter, and you pick the ones that you want to create, and you see it creates all the getter and setter methods for x and y. In an existing class, typically one that you may not have written, you may need to override some method. If you're not sure what the name of that method is, you can just click on some blank space inside the class and go to Code, Override Methods, and all the methods that are in this class that can be overridden will show up. If you have this A to Z grade barred out, you'll be able to see the list of override methods in alphabetical order. Before we leave this tutorial, we want to discuss some of the new features in Android version 2.2. In this course, some of the tutorials are done with older versions of Android Studio, while some are done with this latest version. The differences are mostly minor, with one exception, which has to do with the layout. We're going to describe those differences now. In some older versions of Android Studio, you can see that when you clicked on an image or a widget that was in the screen, all the properties for that image would be laid out on the right-hand side. This created a lot of clutter on the screen and made it hard to get to the important properties. In the latest version of Android Studio, if I click on a widget, for example this text view, you see that the properties window is far less cluttered, with only the important properties being displayed. I can still get at those deeper properties by clicking on this slider, which then reveals the old property window. One of the other new features of version 2.2 is the availability of this new WYSIWYG Constraint Layout Editor. You can tell you have this editor because of the presence of these springs and also these complicated layout objects. While this is a powerful new tool, it is typically far too complicated for the beginning programmer. Therefore, as we do our projects here, if you are using version 2.2, one of the things you will need to do is to come into the XML text file and replace the constraint layout with a relative layout like this. Once you do this, you may need to delete some of the lines that are creating errors. And now you are ready to go. So far, the only bug that I've found in version 2.2.6 early release is that it's sometimes difficult to drag images into this drawable folder. However, in this course, we will be installing most of our images in the MIPMAP directory because Android Studio automatically scales our images in this directory. Thank you.